Now, what, in, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to in, in, you know, introduce my resource persons who have been seated in the last 20 minutes or so. After the introduction, we will move straight to the issue of the exchanges between the British High Commissioner and Ghana's IGP. So first of all, let me do this. Let me start from my busy ladies first. So I'll start with <laughs> Madam uh, Gloria Oforibuidu. Uh, she's a private legal practitioner. Good morning. It's always a pleasure having you on Inside Trade. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. And also, uh, the big man himself, Avis Dako, is the managing editor of the Business Finder. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. The Finder group of papers. Oh, that's okay. Finder and it's not the a Finder finder. group of papers. Oh, that's wonderful. No, your levels don't change. <laughs> Why you didn't tell me? The business actually is only coming on Thursday. The Finder okay. is the main Itself. paper that right. comes out for this. Right, now. right, right. Oh, that, congratulations. It's always been the case. It has always been the case. Oh, I see. So we need, we need, to, we need to rectify the, the, the title. Um, Mr. Benjamin Isuman is also here. He is the Executive Director of Solid Air Ghana. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Right. A pleasure to be here. I know you can't wait to have a bite of the MP, MP <laughs> regional, regional <laughs> delegates conference that just ended. We'll, we'll just do that briefly. I don't, I don't, we, don't want, we don't want that to become the main topic for the day. I think that we think that the Cathedral and the IGP, British High Commissioner Banta, is something that we need to really... So let's do this. So two things. We, we here at Metro TV have put something together to give you a chronology of events in terms of how it all started and how it's ended. And then secondly, the UK High Commissioner herself was on GH1 with, um, um, to talk to us about her response or her reaction to the IGP's letter. So let's watch these two, and when we come back, we'll start a conversation. The British High Commissioner to Ghana, Harriet Thompson, in a tweet shared on May 17, bemoaned the arrest of Oliver Bakavomawa, who was arrested for a road traffic offence, saying that she was interested in the outcome of the convener's arrest. Responding to the High Commissioner's tweet, the IGP, Dr. George Akufudampare, in a letter to the diplomat said her tweet was made from a prejudiced position. This has sparked the expression of several views from a number of Guineans, both first-class citizens and ordinary citizens. Let's begin with a reaction from North Torn MP Samuel Okujota Blakwa, who calls the reply from the IGP to the British High Commissioner for her comments as an attack. In a post shared on Facebook by the Member of Parliament, he predicted the likeliness of the IGP statement to affect Ghana's relationship with the United Kingdom. He even goes on to indicate that the behavior of the IGP appears to be part of a trend by the government to attack partners who criticize it. The opposition National Democratic Congress has also accused the IGP of having committed a diplomatic gaffe with his tersely worded letter to the UK High Commissioner Harriet Thompson. A governance expert, Professor Bafo Ajimandria, on the other hand, says some foreign diplomats in the country interfere in the domestic affairs of Ghana too much. He described some of these interferences as unduly and unnecessary. The director of the Faculty of Academic Affairs and Research at KAIPTC, Professor Emmanuel Kwisienin, also lauded the IGP for responding to the British High Commissioner's tweet on the rearrest of social media activist Oliver Bakavomowo, political scientist and senior lecturer at the University of Ghana. Professor Ransford Jampo has thrown his support behind IGP's letter, cautioning the British High Commissioner to Ghana to stop meddling in the country's internal affairs. With all the back and forth, the British High Commissioner says she is disappointed aside revealing that she didn't expect the IGP to respond to her tweet in such a manner since she was trying to be diplomatic and not otherwise. I mean, his, his letter is strongly worded, it's very lengthy, it, it, it describes your, your tweet as somewhat invasive and intrusive and, and, and interfering in Ghana's, in Ghana's issues. Right, which, which isn't appropriate. Internal security matters specifically is what he said. Do you feel like it was received wrongly? So it, um, it is clear from the reaction that it has not been received in the way that it was intended. What, in, what, what response were you looking for from that tweet? 
Uh, so I wasn't after a response from the IGP at all. Um, when I comment on social media, I comment about all sorts of things in which I'm interested. Um, I suppose to show people a bit about me, to try to open up what it is to be a High Commissioner uh, in a country like Ghana, what it is not just um, to be me as a High Commissioner, but also me as a person. As so I'll tweet about the places in Ghana that I've been and found beautiful or interesting, the people that I've met and so on. So I don't necessarily look for any response now you, you did mention that um, you in put in putting out such with it with your position as as a diplomat you ought to understand the people right you mentioned that in your earlier comments the IGP put forward a quote in his letter saying which sort of means I mean it was explained in the letter I'm sure you you've read its meaning how where, how did you receive that as well and are you have you found the experience so far within the year so I've had a brilliant year. I've had a really brilliant year. Um, I can't believe it's been a year already. The time has passed very, very quickly. Uh, and it's been great getting to know this country um, a little bit. I mean, I feel I've scratched the surface. I've got a long way to go, and I'm looking forward to getting to know more. Um, but meeting people, getting to know the food, the different regions of the country, the culture, a bit about the history, it's been brilliant. And so I'm looking forward to moving, as I say, beyond this incident uh, and continuing to work with the Ghanaian Police Force, as well as the very many other institutions, bodies, organizations that we enjoy such good relationships with. Now, we're going to move to Ghana-UK relations shortly, but do you feel that this tweet you put forward, which you have described was in showing your interest in, in affairs in Ghana, do you feel like it had the, the impact to, to cause any sort of unrest? I would be surprised if a tweet like that... Or incite people. So that was certainly not the intention. Mm -hmm. And my experience of Ghana, a peace-loving nation, where people do have the right to express themselves, they do have the right to come out and protest about the things that matter to them, uh, a tweet like that is not going to be the thing that gets Ghanaians onto the streets, in my view. If I had thought that there was the remotest chance of that, I wouldn't be tweeting things like that. Uh, that's, that's clearly not my intention. But I haven't seen anything uh, in the time that I've been here that would suggest that would have been the response. Now, if you've been following the, the issue of, of Obama, well, we know why he was initially arrested for treason. And now this arrest with regards to tra traffic offence, in spite of the fact that this was not your intention, with the position that you hold as a diplomat, do you feel like it could have some dire impact? All right. So that was Metro TV's compilation of everything that happened in terms of the chronology of events, um, Right from, uh, right from the UK High Commissioner's tweet, which resulted in the reaction from the police and also the reaction from the Foreign Affairs Ministry, etc. So that's where we, that's where we are now. So let me, so this is, this is what, how it all started. So Harriet Thompson, who is the, um, the British High Commissioner, this is what she tweeted. She said, Oliver Baka Vomawo, convener of the Fix the Country Movement, arrested again. I understand for a motor for a motor offense on his way to court. I'll be interested to see how this goes. Now this is this is how it all started. This is how it all started. So I mean lots of questions have been asked. Um, one, whether what she did was kosher, whether it was fit and proper for her to have done that. Um, some of us have said that did the IGP have to even in the first place uh, respond to her. He has a boss. He could have done through other than the Interior Ministry or the Foreign Affairs Ministry. So all kinds of issues have come up. Let me start with um, uh, <laughs> let me start with Elvis Dow, and then um, the rest of my panel would would also uh, my other resource persons respond. But Elvis, where were you? In fact, when you saw the when you saw Her Excellency Harriet Thompson's tweet, what was the first thing that came to your mind? I only said that. I, I, I don't expect a diplomat who is trained, who has been in the business for long, who knows the diplomatic channels of communication, to treat that. Really? Social media should not become a place for diplomacy. Mm -hmm. If British High Commission have built a classroom, they can put it on social media. Right. And when it comes to the issue of a country's security arrangements, 
I don't expect a diplomat to be commenting publicly how, on no, social media about a nation's security matter. How did you how did you interpret the tweet? Because different people are given different interpretations. There's the NDC interpretation of the tweet, and then there's the IGP's interpretation of the tweet. You know, the, the aspect that even got me thinking, arrested again. What does that it mean meant to you? That uh -huh. She has a different idea of Bamawa's earlier arrest. Okay. So it meant that, in her opinion, she has a problem with Vomawa's earlier arrest. And really? that's why it's completely that arrested again. Again. That aspect of the, of the, of the statement. Was is loaded. What, is what, yeah, of course. Because if somebody has arrested on motor traffic, are people not arrested in the UK for motor traffic offenses? Including government officials and top ministers. And are they not arrested for traffic offenses? So if somebody is arrested for traffic offenses, and you are not even making reference to only the traffic offense arrest, but you are saying arrested again, meant or suggest that the earlier arrest, you have a problem with it. But, but Oliver is a subject of interest. And to who? Is well, Oliver to, a UK to, citizen? To, to everybody. I mean, subject now, of interest because of, because of what Oliver has been engaged in. Yes. So what is the business in that? Is Oliver a, a UK citizen or a Ghanaian citizen? Is he holding a UK passport or is he a Ghanaian passport? Mm -hmm. Is it the fact that because Oliver goes to school in the UK, all of a sudden, if something concerns him, then it's their problem? Do you know the number of Ghanaians who have lost their children to uh, knife uh, 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 violence and they died in the UK? Has uh, the UK government written any statement or commented about them? They died in their own country. They were living in the UK and as a result of knife violence in London, People Elvis, lost their relatives. So Elvis, has the UK High Commission, even in Ghana, ever issued any statement that a Ghanaian in the UK has been killed through knife violence? So Elvis, have you read one? That, that's fine. So Elvis, you... That, you... that happened on their own land. Have they issued any statement? Has the UK High Commission mm. ever Ghana ever so issued So she, had no, she had no business issuing that tweet. That's what I said. If you're a diplomat, you have channels of communication. If you have any concern, pass it through that channel. If you decide to use social media, you'll get social media response. And she should even realize that the police have given her respect enough that they didn't also tweet at her, but they actually decided to write a letter, official channel of communication to her. Mm. Because the police could have also taken to social media to respond to her tweet. And I believe that that could even muddy the waters more than writing officially to her. The police taking the decision to actually write a letter to her shows that they, they, they respect her. Mm. And the police believe in doing things in a formal manner. That's why they wrote to her. If you're a diplomat and you do things diplomatically, you'll be treated diplomatically. If you so, decide to treat diplomacy on mm. social media, you'll get social media response. You don't think... You'll you, not be you, treated diplomatically. You, you, don't think, you don't think this tweet is innocuous. So, you know, we probably should have allowed it to go to bed. No. No. If no. You, if, no. She say, she's no, just, you she's, can't. Really? You can't. Unless you have not read a declassified... Uh, files of the CIA, unless you have not read mm, the leaked documents from Edward Snowden, unless you have not read WikiLeaks leaks, if you are in a developing country and you've read these three documents or various documents that I've mentioned, you know how these foreign powers, through various means, have influenced the governance of developing countries. Oh, but aren't and you Aren't you Elvis? No, but, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, Elvis. But aren't you, by this logic, visiting the sins of the forefathers on, on the current What generation? logic? That is, that some, is, people, so, some people may have done some things wrong it, it, in the uh, past. Please, please. But Edward why, Snowden, why? Edward Snowden leaks is not in the past. It happened well, in our true. generation. Well, that's true. WikiLeaks so, happened Snowden in our generation. Snowden is recent, yeah. You can refer to the Nkrumah era or the, 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 the declassified CIA as far as in the past. But the Snowden leaks... And the WikiLeaks happens in our generation. In our generation. Okay. And we must be guided. Please, let us as a country know that we have our sovereignty and we must assert our authority as a sovereign country. If we cannot assert our sovereignty as a sovereign country, then why are we even saying we are independent? Independent of what? Please, we are a country. The security of this country is in the hands of a security architecture. And they are supposed to do their work. And they should be allowed to do their work. For, for a diplomat to decide not to use diplomatic channels, but to go public on social media to comment on a national security issue mm -hmm. in this country is something that everybody must be concerned about. 
Bermamo's earlier arrest, are you telling me that you subscribe the fact that a citizen of Ghana just wake up and says military should go and overthrow the government of the day? Do you subscribe to that? So if he was arrested for that comment, and then you come back and say, Vermont arrested again, are you not, is it not a suggestion that you, you don't think that the earlier arrest was justified? Mm. So is he saying that for any Ghanaian or anybody to wake up and say a government should be overthrown, military is useless? You can all kinds of comments in this country. And you are telling so me that Vermont arrested again to suggesting that... There's the more to this arrest. arrest. There's no, more no. to the, the, so, to the so, arrest. So what are you trying eye. to say? That if anybody threatens the security of the country and the person is arrested, you have a problem with it. And therefore, if the person commits a traffic when they say, Vermont was arrested again. Arrested again for what? Are you the one who determines how the security operates? Are you the one who determines the laws of this country? Are, the, are people in this country not arrested? Is he saying that if somebody threatens the security of the United Kingdom, that person will not be arrested? Please, let's understand that we are a sovereign country. And the security of this country is in the hands of an institution. The institutions must do their work. And they should be allowed to do their work. We should okay. not allow anybody to come to this country and, and try to state and detect to us. Right. Do you know the, the implication of the tweet? Mm -hmm. Do you know what it suggests about our national security as a country? Right. Please, let's not be politicizing everything. Okay. I, I, as I said... She's a diplomat. She's a trained diplomat. She, if you look at her record, she's not a fresh person in the industry. Right. So she knows that diplomatic communication goes through a certain process. Mm. If she had used that process, all that we are talking about it will not happen. But if you want to jump onto social media, a diplomat, nobody says a diplomat can't be on social media. If you go and do your, 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 your activities and you want mm -hmm. to put it on social media, mm -hmm. nobody stops you. But if you go beyond that, and you want to determine or you want to be making comments mm -hmm. on a country's national security, then, then be careful you, get, what you, you get the kind of response, especially right. when you decide to jump onto social but media and not use official communication. How about those who say, and, 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 and I'll need your, your response on this briefly, how about those who say that this is not new, actually? I mean, we've seen what Craig Murray did when he was, with, when, when he was high commissioner. We've seen what John Benjamin did when he was high commissioner. I mean, these guys are used to tweeting all kinds of things. Uh, is it? Okay, so... It does it, not, it's because, doesn't make it it's, right. it's a it, subculture. It is not about a subculture. The yeah. question is, do you subscribe to that as a person? If you're a Ghanaian, you support them. Openly say it. Whether Craig Murray had done it, whether John Benjamin had done it, does not mean that I, Elvis City, has subscribed to that. Okay. That is the bottom line. If you subscribe to it, admit, I don't subscribe to that. I believe that as diplomats, they have ways of doing things. They have been taught. So you don't, so you don't think the IGP so you don't think the IGP overreacted? Never. I think that that's a befitting response. Four page? Yes. And the next time. For a three line tweet? Yes. And the IGP asked a very vital questions. If we are having almost 3,000 people dying as a result of road accident in this country, and somebody commit a road traffic offense arrested, and you don't see anything wrong with it, then you have a problem. We are losing almost 3,000 lives to motor traffic offenses in there. That's a national security threat to this country. Okay. So if the security attorney decide to be fair with okay. motor traffic offenses to save lives, and you sit there and you think that arresting someone for motor traffic offense is unjustified. Unfortunately, in her own country, okay. even higher people mm. have been arrested for motor traffic offenses. That is true. A former a government official who mm. lied when he was caught for motor driving, lied that the wife okay. was the one driving the vehicle. All right. Ten years after the wife was sanctioned, it was found out that he lied. Okay. He was pulled back to court and sanctioned again for lying that the wife was driving the vehicle. That mm. is happening in the UK, That's not right. in Ghana. So okay. what are we talking about? All right. So the WhatsApp line, for those of you who have thoughts or views or opinions that you intend to express on this topic we're, we're talking about, we're having a conversation about, which has to do with the exchange between the British High Commissioner and the and the and Ghana's IGP, you're free to do so on 05,000 We'll be more than happy to hear what you think about this. And also the MPP's regional delegates conference, if you have any thoughts to share, I'll be more than happy to hear from you on that as well. Now let me come to Benjamin Isuman. Ben, I'll ask you the same question I asked Elvis. I mean, where were you um, when you saw the tweet? How was your reaction? What did you read? What meanings did you read into what Her Excellency Harriet Thompson tweeted? Moro, thank you, and uh, good morning to our viewers. First of all, I did not see the High Commissioner's tweet. Okay. My attention was awoken 
to the matter when the Ghana Police Service published its four-page letter sent to the High Commissioner. Really? Yes. So you mean, but, but for the IGP's letter, you wouldn't even know that the but High Commissioner for, had tweeted anything? But for 31st May publication mm -hmm. by the Ghana Police Service on, on Twitter, you had no idea. It wasn't even a subject matter for discussion. I have been, yes, last week we were here discussing the MPP True. primaries yeah. um, and, and then MPP regional conferences. Yeah, so, and, I, and I'll pick your thoughts it, before it, we it, leave. It, it, it was never conference. a yeah. subject matter in the public domain. It has become a subject matter in the public domain for debate as a result of the 31st May publication by the Ghana Police Service. By releasing a letter that is 11 days old, that had been sent to the High Commissioner and which had been received at the High Commission, the Ghana Police Service, in their wisdom, decided to release it 11 days after that original letter. What for? My, my, my thinking is, what for? What is, the, what is the motivation? If the Ghana Police Service has sent a letter dated 20th May to the British High Commission and has chosen 11 days after to put it out in the public domain, what was the motivation? What was the Ghana police, unless maybe the IGP Dampare and his team, Kwesi Fori and Co, are ready to explain to us what motivated them? Well, this is, this, so this is perhaps what, what, has, what motivated the police to do so. So if you read the, the letter, I call it the love letter to Harriet Thompson, um, which, which, which says police administration's response to your tweet on Tuesday, 7th May 2022. This is the reason why they decided to, to reply here. Now, what they're saying is, the, ordinarily, the Ghana Police Service would not have responded to comments such as yours, obviously made from either a biased or uninformed position. However, and, and for me, this is what is key. We have learned from previous painful experience that it has not been helpful to ignore such misguided, unwarranted, and biased comments intended to tarnish the reputation of the Ghana Police Service, and that of our country. What is more, we consider your tweet a violation of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations of 1961. So, two key reasons. One, the Ghana Police, after 11 days, realized that there's been a violation of the Vienna Convention, 1961, specifically Article 41, 1 and 2. And I'll read, I'll read that to you as well. Two, look, the Ghana Police Service, this has been happening for too long. The Ghana Police Service says it cannot allow this to happen. And so for the first time, they have to put this matter to rest and to let these diplomats know that you can't just say anything and get away with it. Granted, so these are the reasons. Granted. But I'm saying that after mm -hmm. you sent the letter to the British High Commission mm -hmm. on 20th May, mm -hmm. what happened between 20th May and 31st May before you release the letter, that's supposed to be restricted. No, but what, what, why, why do you think that is material? It is material because when the letter is restricted, yes. confidential, yes. it's supposed to be taken as such, as, as non-classified. Yes. It will be for a certain trigger yes. of reaction uh -huh. for the Ghana Police Service to release it 11 days after. That is my, 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 my bone of contention because... When the letter was sent 20th May, nobody in Ghana knew about it. Mm -hmm. It is between the Ghana Police Service and the British High Commission and perhaps the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Yes. So it was matter being handled on, on diplomatic lines. Well, presumably. Presumably. By 11 days, nothing, nothing to me happened within that space of time. Absolutely. Because when, so, you, read the, when you read the Foreign Affairs Ministry's Ministry's letter, it clearly tells you that now that something is going to be done about exactly. it. Exactly. Nothing so what, was being done I'm about it. That, yeah. The, what provoked the, the police to release a confidential letter which had been delivered 11 days ago, now to release it? What was the motivation? That, for me, is a problem. And no, but, but, I, it, I, I, come back, I come back to the same question, and so what? It, it, it's, it's taking 11 it, days, it, it and is, so what? It is important because, like, the letter that was released, yes. it was embossed as restricted. Yes, restricted. What does it mean? No, but no third party is supposed to see it. Absolutely. So why? It was between the IGP and the, and the High Commission. Fantastic. So why suddenly everybody in Ghana has to see a confidential no, letter? The same letter was put out there on, on, the, on the Ghana Police Service's social media handle. That, you don't get to me. Okay. What I'm saying is that okay. 
when they sent that confidential letter on 20th May, yes. nobody in Ghana knew about it. Yes. It was between two bilateral parties. Yes. Now, suddenly, 11 days after that, uh -huh. 11 days after that, yes. police re decided to release a confidential letter uh -huh. into the public domain. Was it an error on the part of the Ghana Police Service IT team or what? Or the IDP got infuriated about something and therefore decided to release it. That for me, that period, it raises a lot of questions. Your something issue was, happened. This was a letter which was sent to them confidentially. Exactly. What could it's, have motivated the Ghana Police Service or the days. IDP yes. to now make it public? Yes. So that's, that's what you want to know. Exactly. Because the IDP, sorry, uh, uh, excuse me, it's not WikiLeaks to release confidential letters after days. Okay, so let's it's, move it's, on. It should have been. So for you, that's the it, first question. Good. Again, again, the content of the tweet, which brought about the reaction. Oliver Vomawo, convener of the Fix the Country movement, arrested again. Is that a fact? Or it is not a fact? Mm -hmm. It's a statement of fact. Mm -hmm. And if it's a statement of fact, why should anybody read extra meanings into a statement of fact? But what business does she have telling us what she, what, let's even assume it's a statement of, no, actually it's a statement of fact. Yes. It is actually a statement of fact. Yes. But what business does she have reminding us that a man has been, has been no. arrested again? It is, a, it is a breaking news in Ghana at the time. Yes. And she got that information. Yes. And if, if Vomawa is a person of interest. And I disagree with people who say that the British High Commission cannot have interest in each issue, issues in Ghana. If you read the Vienna Convention, that the IDP now want to educate everybody about it. And, and mind you, the IDP is not an expert in, state, in the study of the Vienna Conventions and International Treaties, much more than the British High Commission. And, 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 and Evers said it here. The expertise that she has in diplomacy cannot be matched by our IDP. So I'm surprised the IDP will, will seek to educate or school the, the, the British High Commissioner on matters of diplomacy. Right. The Vienna Convention that the IDP stated in the letter says, at, at, in Article 3 of the Vienna Convention, yes. 3D, mm. it says that ascertaining by all lawful means, it's talking about the responsibilities for the High Commissioners and the Ambassadors, mm -hmm. ascertaining by all lawful means, mm -hmm. conditions and developments in the receiving state conditions and development in the receiving state, that the conditions and development in Ghana, she must ascertain it by all lawful means. How do you ascertain information? Conditions in Ghana, how do you ascertain them? You don't, you, but you don't necessarily have to tweet about no, it. Oh, no, if no, you want no, to ascertain no, information, no, how, no, I'm, I'm, how does tweeting about you, it you know, help you to ascertain you are, you, are, you, are, you are avoiding the question. Okay, go ahead. I am saying that. Mm. To ascertain development yes. in the country, yes. to ascertain conditions in the country, mm -hmm. the High Commission must be interested in certain things that goes on in Ghana. Yes. Good. And, and, and reporting thereon to the government of the sending state. Now, after ascertaining the issues, she can then report to her, her sender, that is in London, yes. informing them of what's happening in Ghana. Right. Oliver Pomawa is a student in UK. The, the vice chancellor of Hesse University in UK has written to the British High Commission in the government of Ghana regarding the earlier arrest True. and expressing concern about his human rights. Right. And, and, and BBC and all that, the British media have been on Ghana as a result of that. So the person has become a person of interest to the British government and the British uh, uh, High Commission in so Ghana. You think, you think this discussion must be situated within this context? Exactly. I mean, no, you cannot take it out of context. That she just woke up one day, there was one uh, Kuku Mensa who has been arrested in Sugakope again, and she's tweeting about it. Okay. The person must be a person of interest. The, high, the vice chancellor of the university in UK mm -hmm. had written to the government of Ghana and the British High Commission expressing fear for the life of their own student. Right. Remember that that's who is also investing in him, his right. own scholarship. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are investing in him to become somebody for society. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, she says that that person has been arrested again. And it's, you admit that it's a statement of fact. It's a fact, yes. And she cannot put out a statement of fact. I beg to differ. So people who are interpreting this to be an interference must probably look for the definition of interference again. No, but, but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why? Okay, so her tweet came on the back of Oliver's arrest. The same Vienna Conventions that you are referring to, Article 40, 
one, one and two. In fact, one is quite specific, which is respect for the rules and regulations of the receiving country. It's quite clear, black and white. Now, hold on. Why was Oliver arrested? He was arrested because allegedly he had broken a traffic offense. The matter is going to court. The court is going to test it as to whether indeed the man is guilty or innocent. Now, are you saying by your logic that because she's allowed by virtue of the Vienna Con aspects of the Vienna Convention to ascertain what is happening in her receiving country, she's allowed to question, albeit mildly or subtly, <laughs> why the state security is taking somebody on, a citizen of this country, is taking somebody on for allegedly breaking a traffic offense? Are you questioning why? Moral. Are you questioning, are you questioning why, uh, how do you call it, um, uh, um, um, or do you agree with her that what had happened to Oliver in itself, you know, comes with some, some, kind of, some sort it, of a question moral. mark? Is that you, what you're you saying? You are adding insinuations to, to whatever was posted. She didn't say mm -hmm. Oliver cannot be arrested. No, but she said again. No, no but that is a fact. The guy has been arrested again. This is the third time he's been arrested. And so what, what makes it, um, you know, uh, that she's questioning the system? So she's so, reporting exactly the fact. The fact is that Oliver has been arrested again, and she's reporting, reporting the fact. That cannot be taken out of context to say that she's questioning the system. She's never questioning the arrest. She's never questioning the police for that the police cannot arrest anybody for whatever offense that the police suspect the person to be. She's, she even went on to say that she's following up. And see interested. how it goes. And see how it goes. How that, does that mean that she's stopping the police from doing their work? Is there any okay. law that prevents anybody from being arrested more let than me, one? Let me come to. Is there any law? That. That's fine. I, so I come back to you. I come back to you. That's a fact. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. At ben, least, ben, there's no law against multiple arrests. Ben, 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 ben has made his preliminary comment. Please land in it. It's a matter of minutes so that I can bring in Madame Gloria. Lastly, I want to I want to put it on record. Yes. The fact that we are discussing this matter here after the police released that statement, mm. means that this, the police just, just shook the honest nest. It's the police that have brought us here where we are today. It is regrettable, especially in the week that we are celebrating the jubilee of the queen and, and, and the monarch. It is regrettable for us to be here. It is unfortunate, and that is why the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in good wisdom, has started to step in okay. and now train the, the IDP, unfortunately, under the bus. Mm. Because, you see, in a government structure, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs play a certain catalytic role. Yeah. If the Ministry of Roads, if the Ministry of National Security, if the Ministry of Agriculture have business to do or issues with the British High Commission or yeah. the US Embassy or whichever diplomatic mission in Ghana, it is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs' job to step in and, 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 and work things out. Also, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have people, I am told, they have officers who follow each and every high commission's do, um, activities in Ghana, okay. including their post. Right. So if the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, when they saw the post, found it to be undiplomatic or okay. found it to be unbecoming, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Foreign Affairs would have taken measures to address it with the high commissioner. But when the Ministry of Foreign Affairs did not find it suitable that the post or the tweet was in an infringement of the Vienna Convention, I wonder, I, I, I said that to say that the IPP does not have what it takes to question the, the, the diplomatic credentials of the High Commissioner. If the Foreign Affairs Ministry, that is having diplomats and, and experts in, in, in diplomacy, have not even found that tweet to be, to be problematic. Let me How come can to, the IPP will do? Let me come I, to, I find it very distasteful but the conduct of the, of, the, of the police in this matter. I'll come back to you again um, and on, this, on, this same, on this same issue because there's some other. Um, angles to the matter that we haven't looked at. So but let me come to Madame Gloria or Ferry Just um, call me Auntie Gloria. Auntie Gloria, yes. that's fine. <laughs> Go by your lawyer. She's a private legal practitioner. So I don't know, perhaps I'll ask you the same question. Well, what was, do you make I'll, of the two? Do you read more meanings into it too? I will simply say that Maus Oliver Bakavo Mabo was born in 1986, 36 years ago. So he has never experienced a coup. And probably my um, former student here to Mr. Suman have never experienced a coup. Fortunately for us, the last and hopefully the final coup was on 31st December 1981. And I guess you were born long after that. If you've experienced the coup, if you've seen parliament dissolved, the constitution suspended, political party and democratic elections banned, 
Persons asked to report to the nearest police station for their or barracks for their own security, only to get there, be tortured, and sent to the firing squad. If you've seen women stripped naked on the streets for selling, you know, selling in the market and being whipped naked, if you've seen men, business executives being made to crawl on the ground and to sweep and to co collect urine and um, toilet a fecal matter, if you've seen children dropped out of school because their parents have been detained without trial, if you've seen families wrecked, if you've seen the devastating effect of a coup, you not even dream or fantasize about it. I saw the 1972 coup vividly. I saw the May 15 uprising, which was unsuccessful, vividly. I saw the June 4, 1979 um, coup uprising. uprising. No, that was the coup, was the vividly. Point. And the December 31st, we prayed day and night that a coup will never, ever happen in this country. In fact, the joy of having democracy is that even if we think the government is at its worst, we have laws and legislations to put in place to check the government. Or we have elections every four years to change the government, but not a coup. In fact, I, I cringe when I hear the term C-O-U-P. Please, don't even go there. And even the coup makers, no matter the excuse they make, when they come in, they come in for their own interests. I don't know if you studied government or political science. History has, it's vivid from the NLC regime to the NLC to the SMCD1, SMCD2, AFRC, PNDC. What happened? We, the society was not transformed. The coup makers at the end of the day sought their own interests at the expense of us all. So please, let's not go into a coup. I mean, let's not even talk about it. And I'm surprised he spoke about it and nobody reacted. Or even if there was a reaction, it was very minimal. Please, we need our peace, and we need our legislature in place, and we need our democratic elections also in place. I was looking at him, I was looking at his background, and I realized that um, he was working in the office of the president, and between January 20 to December 2011, Oliver was also engaged as a constitutional researcher and the access to justice advisor to Ghana's Constitution Review Commission, which was appointed by the president of Ghana on the advice of the country's attorney general to assess the strengths and weaknesses of Ghana's 1992 constitution and to make recommendations. So he was very illustrious in the commission and he was even given an award. Fine, that is his achievement and now he's doing a PhD in Cambridge. But for God's sake, we don't want to hear the word coup right. from anybody. But, but, I have but, not landed. I also but, want but to this say... this matter is actually uh, in court as to whether... Yes, I also want to say yes. that I've read the letter. You know, I just read the letter from the IGP just okay. this morning when right. I was here. And I read through it and I was like, wow, this is public education. Everybody, we shouldn't just fantasize or be biased about that letter. Let us release it to primary school, to JHS, to SHS. Let them listen to it. Let them read it. And let them realize that it's a form of public education. I didn't even know about the number of road accidents that take place in this country. It's worse than COVID, you know, the COVID-related or HIV-related deaths. And this is something that we must all be educated. Maybe DVLA can also inform new drivers about it so that everybody is careful when we are driving on our routes. But I also want to say that, you see, the diplomats are humans. There's something called advocacy. When you do advocacy... You try to bring out your, what you perceive as a problem. You bring it out, you send it out there to the public, to the diplomats, to all stakeholders, and try to get them on your side. It's as simple as that. I remember when the Ayawasu West Wagon crisis occurred. I remember former President Mahama invited the diplomats and had a seminar for them on the security situation in Ghana. It was very well presented, but not long afterwards, we found out that some of the photos and videos used were from another occurrence, okay? But I guess he was trying to be an advocate. And probably, I think probably he succeeded because not long afterwards, the then ambassador to the, um, U, was a U.S. ambassador, um, in, in, quickly, I don't know, he, she, she, they came up with a policy that if you are in government, you can't get 
um, a visa which is more than four weeks. Of course, there were all kinds of reasons given to that, but I bet my last time that since it came around that time, there was some influence with the advocacy done by the former president. So it's advocacy. Maybe Oliver um, Dwama has done his advocacy and attracted the diplomatic community. So there's also the need. We call something, you know, the all the altering pattern. Let's hear the other side. Let's right. hear two sides. Let's not be influenced by one side. So there's also the need for the government security agents to also have their advocacy so that the diplomatic core and other stakeholders and the world media will know their perspective um, from our perspective, fix the country's perspective, and then they can take a decision. So I'm very pleased with the IGP's letter. I think it should go out there. I just read it. All along, I thought it was a letter that he was, you know, living and was saying all kinds of things, but it was just an educative letter and asking questions and doing some comparisons between security situations in the UK and in Ghana and also telling us of the road crisis, the road um, what do you call it? What we have in Ghana, the serious crisis on rules as a sense. There's nothing wrong with it. You can put it up on air for people to read or put well, it on asked, your Benjamin, online. Benjamin um, asked a question that online, this is, um, you have an online. online portal. Yes, so that people read. But, but it's he, very yeah, educated. But, but Benjamin asked a question. He says, why did he have to take about 11 days for the police to leak this letter? What well, could have possibly been I don't know who there? leaked the letter, and <laughs> I don't have the facts. Been, what could have possibly with the, been with, there, with the leakage? The, the motive here. With the leakage, I don't know the, who leaked it, and I yeah. am not in a position to know. So I can't verify whether it was the police or the British High Commission or the media or someone, a very um, exuberant staff did. in any of them. The okay, but did. whatever it is, it's good we have that information. We are tired of the media sometimes exaggerating or minimizing information. We need information. The IGP's letter should be put out there. I just read it a few minutes ago. It's very educative, very informative. We need public education. We need to be informed. We need to be should informed. We, should we, and we but, also but, but, need this information but, 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 of road accidents. I fine. didn't know. Th I, I, I wish others would know, including our drivers, our short short drivers, our taxi drivers, all those who renew their licenses at DVLA. Right. We should know this but then the menace thing, that's, that's in true, our but, society. That's, that's true. So maybe that's one positive side of what the IGP has done. But then the, the question, the fundamental question which is being posed, and I don't know whether you have an opinion to share on this, which is, should we have a culture where state institutions must be allowed to be responding to diplomats? Is that a kind of culture we want to encourage? So tomorrow, let, let me ask you DVLA, another question. DVLA writes a letter to them. Uh, let me, let me tell you another easy, question. You know, is that Once we have a culture of civil society organizations, I'm one of them, I've right. always been, having the you know, opportunity to speak their mind, to go on advocacy, I mean express, see a problem, as also identify what they think is a problem, move out there, influence stakeholders to also appreciate the issue and talk about it or address it. Then there's also, you know, the opportunity to be given to the other party, that's uh, ministries, departments, agencies of state, to also tell us their side. There's always an opportunity. Okay. There's something called, it's a rule of natural justice, all the altering pattern. Let's hear both sides. Then we can take a decision. So you can't gag one and allow one to express themselves. All right. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll, I'll take your concluding remarks on this matter. And then we'll, we'll go back to the NPP's regional uh, our delegates conference, take a brief remarks, and then we come to National Cathedral. But I have some very interesting questions that I will be, um, I'll be asking you. Some persons have sent me WhatsApp messages. I'm not sure if they would want me to mention their names, but um, I'm sure they are, they are still watching and they know. If you want me to mention your name, please add it to your messages. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have a difficulty. But... Um, Anyway, let's take a break. I'll be back. All right, so welcome back. This is Inside Pages on Metro Television. My name is Aldo Moro. Um, we are having a conversation about the exchange between the Ghana's IGP and the British High Commissioner, Harriet Thompson. Uh, my panel members or my resource persons I've given us, they have shared your opinion on what you think about um, what Harriet Thompson tweeted and also what the IGP wrote, four page letter. Um, but um, Margaret Ansay sends a WhatsApp message and she says that um, she's been listening into, um, she's an aspiring national women's organizer of the 
NDC, she's, she's watching, and she's uh, sent a message. She says, I shall ask um, Auntie Gloria this question, and I'm going to do just that. Uh, Mora, what, so what did Auntie Gloria do or say when the military entered parliament on the night of 6th, 7th January 2021? Or well, that was not dangerous too. What judiciary is she talking about? The hypocrisy is too much. And then she goes ahead to say, and she wants the IGP's letter to be sent to schools for public education, really. So John Benjamin was a citizen of Ghana, and therefore there were no Vienna conventions then. Moro, ask her, and please mention my name. I want to hear her honest answer uh, to how um, uh, answer on this. We still don't even know who gave the command. Okay, so that has to do with what happened in Parliament. We don't know who gave the command. Um, so that's it. So, madam, I don't know whether you like to... Yes, I would like to answer here. Yeah. As I said, I don't know what age she is because the last coup we had in Ghana, fortunately, and hopefully the last, was on 31st December 1981. Right. But if she had lived through a coup and she has to rush home by 6 p.m. because it's curfew time and she's caught on the street, she'll be whipped, stripped naked, whipped and lashed and put in detention without trial, then she will not be asking me this question. But I would say that fortunately we have a parliament Fortunately, we have a parliament. The parliament had not been dissolved. It was in existence. And the two majority members, the NDC and MPP, who were almost at par when it comes to numbers, were wrangling as to who should... Um, I think there was some form of wrangling, right. you know. And so because of that, the security had to come into place. We had the parliament. What if we didn't? That would have been worse. So at least we had the privilege of a parliament and the matter has since been resolved. We also have the privilege of I think of she wants to know whether you, con you condemn that too. The invasion of parliament by the military. I, I would call it the privilege of having parliamentary democracy and the privilege of having the numbers which reflected what society voted for. So I'm talking about the military that so invaded, that's all, no, invaded I'm, parliament I'm not, that day. I'm not going to jump and say that no, I condemn it. I'm just going to say, thank God we have a parliament. At the, at the end of the day, parliament was allowed to continue its work despite the intervention by the security because they were wrangling and fighting mm. and pushing, you know. So, sorry, I'm asking this that. question. But fortunately, we have mm. a parliament. Yes. And, and, and I will not give a parliament for anything. Fortunately, we have a judiciary. I will not give it up for anything. Right. I know people like to give general and blanket descriptions. Do we have a judiciary? Of course we have a judiciary. I'm a practicing lawyer. I go to court almost every day, different courts, and we are able to get judgment. Mm. If she thinks the judiciary are not up and doing, she should come up with her facts. I have my facts. I get justice for my clients okay. in the court. Sorry, I'm, so, sorry, I'm what stretching What if we did not have a point? judiciary? Right. And we had to resort to Gonda mm. Barracks or Arakan Barracks or the military junta. How do they call them? Those who sat behind the screen and gave judgment. Is that right. what she wants? Please. She shouldn't even go there. Okay. We have an executive, we have a judiciary, right. and we have a parliament. Okay. And she belongs to a political party and is seeking position in that political party. What if parties had been banned? Okay. They used to be banned some time ago. And she's looking forward to being elected and maybe coming to office in 2024. Maybe. All it right. depends on the electorate. That's so fine. we shouldn't go that, there. That's, let's, let's move on then. I, I guess that um, Margaret's question has been answered. That's, you know, unfortunately, I'm not here, Margaret, so you may not be able to you know, continue to perhaps banter with her. She can text me but she's <laughs> and I want to know her age. Or she can call you and, 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 yes, and, and, and seek for clarity on this matter. Yeah, so let me come back to you, uh, Ben, because, but, but you see, you said, for instance, that the, the, the Foreign Affairs Ministry's letter, uh, or statement, and then it's actually a statement, and last week's statement was seeking to say ceasefire. Ceasefire, we've been friends for long, let's sit down and talk. I don't know whether this puts the matter to bed, it puts it to rest, or it's actually, it's actually the beginning of a new chapter because we don't know what the Foreign Affairs Ministry is going to do. Are they going to invite the Foreign Affairs? Are they going to invite the IGP and Harriet Thompson, let's sit and talk? Or beyond the statement, nothing is going to happen. I mean, let, me, let me come back to because you just spoke and then uh, I just came in. So um, let me come back to Elvis. Elvis, you see, and I need you to be very brief on this because we need to move to um, Cathedral. It's, it's an extremely important matter. Do you see this matter? Do you see this matter ending based on the Foreign Affairs Ministry's letter, or you think that it's 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 going to it's going to continue? Oh 
that, that should just be the end. I think the Foreign Affairs Minister is telling the UK High Commissioner also that you, you were wrong, because that is the, not the way you should go about it. So this is the way no, to I'm, go I'm about it. Sure of course, course. exactly. No, 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 what, no, no, what, what I rather no, read... No, hold on, hold on. Elvis, 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 hold on. I read no. a letter. I don't need to read it to me. Okay. The Foreign Affairs Minister is saying that such issues are not dealt in public, so let's go and do it behind closed doors. That's what the letter is Exactly. Saying. And exactly. it is to both of them. Right. Because he, she, the British government came out public, and the IG person came out public. Public, right. And the Minister of Foreign Affairs is saying that both of you are not supposed to be doing it in public. Mm. Let's go and do it behind closed doors. That's right. the meaning of the letter. Mm -hmm. It has nothing. If you say throw IGP under the bus, you have thrown the High Commission also under the bus. Because the, the, the finality of the letter is that what both of you have done is not supposed to be done in public. It should be done behind closed doors. That is how diplomacy is done. Elvis. That's what the letter is saying. In line, hold on. In line oh. with the general diplomatic practice of communicating. That is what with, I'm saying. Oh, no, hold on, ah. hold on. <laughs> what, is, what is the general level of communication? No, tell me what the, what the general... The general level of communication is that there are channels you should use. It's explained. The woman did not use the channel. Neither did the IGP also use the channel. So both of you come back and let's use that channel. That is what the foreign ministry letter is saying. And I've said it, and I'll say it. If every youth has the mindset like me, would have marched on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and tell them that they should stop the ass kissing mentality. We should accept our authority as a country. When somebody messes up, we should let the person know that you have a way of doing things. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't go beyond how you are trained and do things yeah. and expect to be treated how things should be done. Yeah. Okay? That's what in politics in Ghana we call boot for boot. Right. You see, when you do the right thing. We also do the right thing. Right. When you do the wrong thing, we also meet you at the same ground with the wrong thing. Because we must let you understand that we respect you as a country in as UK. Right. We we all understand that we have a long-standing relationship. Okay. Let's keep it by doing things the right way. Mm -hmm. That's what the letter is saying. Let's not go outside doing things the right way. Right. So the letter of the foreign affairs is not throwing it's telling both of them that. The way you went about it is wrong. Mm. It is not done that way in diplomacy. In diplomatic circles, in line with diplomatic principles, you have channels of communication. Right. Let's use it. That's all that the letter is saying. I'm so saying. stop the public gallery uh, uh, communication and use established diplomatic principles of con That's what the letter is saying. Mm. So for the letter, for me, the Foreign Affairs is telling both of them that by going public, you are both wrong. You are supposed to use established channels of communication. What that meant is that if the High Commission had used the process, which is described as in line of diplomatic communication, the IGP would have used the, that same process. Okay. But the, she didn't use it. The IGP didn't use it. Okay. And the Foreign Affairs says, please, no. Mm -hmm. That is not how things are done in diplomatic circles. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the established process of diplomatic communication yep. and let's all be okay. Okay. And I think that's what the letter is saying. Fine. And that is the right thing to do. That's why. Let me, let me, let me talk to Ben now. Ben, what, what the letter you... seeks to do from right. the Foreign Affairs Ministry mm -hmm. is to tell every government appointee or institution head that if you have any issue with any ambassador or any high commissioner or whatever, you route it through the Foreign Affairs Ministry. It is taking charge. It is telling the IGP that if you have a beef with the High Commission, go through the Foreign Affairs Ministry. That's why the President appointed us. That's why we are here to do. And that's why we have the expertise. Okay. So not you writing letters and all that. And mind you, it is the only official communication in public domain which is supposed to be classified, which is supposed to be, to be uh, secret, confidential, restricted. It's the police letter that is in the public domain. A tweet by High Commissioner or an ambassador will not end today, will not end tomorrow. High commissioners and ambassadors will continue to tweet on, on, on whatever they are, they are doing or whatever they are concerned about in this country. It is normal practice. Mm. And it will not stop. So if anybody is, is thinking that by the Foreign Affairs Ministry's um, uh, intervention that diplomatic me means, means direct you know, engagement and all that, that, <laughs> that person will be deluding himself right. or herself. Mm -hmm. Now let me put something in perspective. This discussion is not about who said coup d'etat. Or so somebody calls for coup d'etat. And Madam Goraya, I, maybe I look young, but I'm, 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 I'm No, 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 please. Uh, let, let's, I, no, 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 no. I disagree. Uh, no, no, I disagree. You don't disagree my, my, he my, my was age. arrested. No, 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 why was no, no, arrested? No, no, because no, no, he threatened no, the coup. No, no, so why are you ma, trying ma, to brush it madam, under madam, the madam, carpet? Madam, madam, please, madam, I disagree. Mama, this is his third time of arrest. 
His first time of no, please, can I finish? His first time of arrest had to do with 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 um, uh, his calling for a, a coup d'état or mm -hmm. a, his, his mention of a coup and all that. The second arrest had to do in East Legon police station where he was arrested for road traffic offense. This is his third time of arrest. So it is not, you know... Um, so, so you, you, are, so, no, so madam, you cannot madam, say that he did not mention speaking. a coup. I was, he did. Madam, so why are you madam, trying madam, to... I was here, I was here, I was here when you were speaking. When, <laughs> after, <laughs> uh, I beg you, let, let me have the, the time yeah, to finish this. Yeah, now, please. So this discussion must be situated properly. Mm -hmm. This discussion had to do with a road traffic offense that the police alleged is the reason for his arrest. Yes. For which reason the British High Commission arrested again. Mm -hmm. That means this is his third time of arrest. Yes. And it's not his second time of arrest. Mm -hmm. So the coup, the dimension that is being brought to this, uh, this uh, just muffles the issue. Muffles the issue and that is why she said again. Now, 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 uh, yes, so that's what she said again. Yeah, so she he said again. And first was the coup, it's a fact. and now no, it's a road it, The discussion yes. is not about a coup d'etat, yeah. yeah. or no, somebody please, who likes coup d'etat, or who supports coup d'etat. The discussion is not about that. It goes beyond that. This discussion is about road traffic offense and the arrest of Oliver Obama, for which he said, Oh, it has been arrested again. I will follow up. There's nothing untoward about that statement. There's nothing undermining in that statement. It is only expressing a statement of fact. Now, let me put this also, also uh, down. Look, the Ghana-UK relationship is too advantageous, is too big to be left in the hands of any appointee of the president without diplomatic skills to damage. The benefits that the UK-Ghana relationship stands for all the people of Ghana to have opportunities and, and to develop themselves is so huge that it will be an indictment on the government to allow any appointee of the government to ruin that relationship. And for anybody at all to think that it is about time an IGP or whoever, maybe, uh, maybe a director of agriculture, will, will, will stand up and, and, and throw salvos at the French ambassador, at the, at, the, at the Canadian high commissioner and all that. If you think you, that's the way you are going to go, you are rather burying Ghana's chances at development. And so it, it stands in nobody's interest to, 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 to add on an IGP or a, a forestry commission CEO that pick a fight with uh, the Danish um, ambassador for speaking about afforestation issues in Ghana or the Chinese ambassador for anything at all. It is not, it's not going to benefit you. It is rather proper for you to let the person go by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs letter that if you have any beef with any foreign mission, contact us and let us handle it. Mm. And for now, we take over, cease, and, and take it out. Why? When the police issue their statement, their, 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 their letter to release their letter, that was sent 11 days earlier to the High Commissioner. Did they stop her from, from speaking up? She went, in fact, that very day, or the following day, she went on TV mm -hmm. and said that she knows more about conventions and treaties and that she can school the IGP on international treaties. What does it mean? It means that she's unfazed by, by that letter that she had received 10, uh, 11 days earlier and you releasing it. She's unfazed by that. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I cringe. And I, when I see people wanting to have a banter with, with that, well, we, we support you, fight on. That is very dangerous. Now, Moro, look, this country has government with systems and structures. There are people responsible for certain duties. If any officer of the government has a, 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 a something to do with any foreign mission, it is up to them to engage the Foreign Affairs Ministry, to handle it. Okay. What the IGP has done is regrettable. The letter is very offensive. It is yeah. unfortunate that it's been recommended for children on this platform. The letter is, the letter that called the, the, the ambassador ignorant. You said that we should send it to children to learn, so the children can be calling ambassadors who visit their schools and give them laptops and all that, all donations. You can call them as ignorant. Mm. I beg to differ. This letter does not deserve to be given to even secondary school children to study mm -hmm. how much more children. Okay. It is dangerous for, for us. The letter is misguided, mm -hmm. it is petty, it is pedestrian, and must not be entertained or encouraged in this country. Thank you. Wow, that's quite short interesting. Let me read. Let me just that's read. a short intervention. Just a short, okay. okay. Please do. Please go ahead. Please. Benjamin has spoken. But right. see, this is the problem of African development. So we will never develop. This claim that 
our relationship with people is benefiting us, in actual fact, is a fallacy. Right. They take more from us than we get from them. If you read the UN Economic Commission for Africa's report, it tells you that the value of resources and money that is siphoned from this continent to the advanced countries is more than the total aid that they bring to us and any support they give to us. Okay. So this claim that we benefit from them, and therefore even if they are, they are disrespecting us and okay. interfering, we should keep quiet. Okay. It is not founded on any fact. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, okay. in 2015, Daily Graphic had access to the number of people who applied for visas to the UK High Commission. They multiplied by the amount charged for visa fees. The total amount that they got hmm, as amount Ghanaians paid for visa fees was more than the support UK government gave to the country in two years put together. Okay. So visa fees alone out of this country is more than the total support they give us annually. So that's a visa fallacy. Fees and it's a fact. Okay. I'm giving you the source that Again. Daily Graphic published that story in 2015. Okay. So this idea that we need these people mm. desperately that without them we can't okay. survive. Let it me... is what has led to our begging mentality on okay. this continent that right. we have actually made ourselves beggars and thinking that without right. them we can't survive. It's, it's not Relations true. must be mutually beneficial. Okay. As, no, we, no, speak, stretch, because that's no way as we speak we today, have next, yes, every not, study, yes. everything across the globe mm -hmm. has shown that the relationship between the advanced countries mm -hmm. and the developed countries tilts in favor of the advanced countries. Okay. So we should never okay. ever have this mentality that the, the relationship we have with these advanced countries okay. actually is more beneficial to us okay. than them. All it right. is not factual. Let so you, why are we creating this impression? This. Because let, of that, okay. we should become subservient to whatever they do, even when they are wrong. Let me we should this. never ever let that. Obviously, we should let the figures and the facts guide us rather no, than yes. this emotional Obviously, me, arguments that we yes, make. Yes, yes. Obviously, let me do this. Uh, just quickly before um, Auntie Gloria comes in. Um, look, I've had tons of messages from our our viewers, and let me read some of them before I bring in Madam Gloria, and then we can wrap up with the conversation about the cathedral. So this one here from Mamiya, Mamiya from Nungwa says, I think, I think if it was a question, then it could be argued that she was questioning uh, the arrest. And that please tell Madam Gloria that uh, the arrest is not about the coup, she's diverting the conversation. And this one here says that, um, so Ghana is irrelevant without UK, the commissioner should be guided by the, by the V convention with her actions. Please, let's protect our own. For one, support the IGP to protect lives and our nation's sovereignty, Thaddeus in Nandom. And continues to say it does not matter the number of days she has no business doing that. Um, and then that's it. And this one here says, uh, this woman is, uh, this one is, is a hope hypocrite. I don't know who you're talking about. In fact, the hypocrisy of this woman is too much. Mr. Host, respect your platform. Don't bring blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's now. Uh, good morning, Moro. Kindly read the British High Commissioner's tweet carefully. Arrested again, had no question mark. That's true. You're absolutely right on that. And the question marks makes a big difference. So you're absolutely right. Um, uh, had no question mark. So it should not be read as a question. Uh, good morning, Mr. Moro. Always bring Mr. Elvis and Madame Gloria. Um, I'm a law and international relations student. And I'm interested in listening to them, please. I'm Kojo Techi in Kumase. Nandika Mabuatin says, good morning, Moro. It is very despicable to hear certain people, particularly the NDC, speaking in favor of the British High Commissioner. Are they saying that some people are more human than others? Honorable Stephen, uh, Stephen Amua, MC, and others were arrested by police for the same road traffic offenses. People hail the police, and today is a setting Oliver and the High Commissioner is complaining. Interesting times ahead. In my regards to Obatan Packaging for our MPP Women's Organizer. And then last two, good morning, Moro. In the face of this excruciating economic hardship, the executive arm of government finds it prudent to appropriate. Okay, we haven't started uh, talking about that yet. So when we do, I'll read your message. Uh, good morning, a harmless tweet by British High Commissioner has degenerated into a public uproar and an undiplomatic response from the Inspector General of Police. The response was intemperate, virulent, and out of place. David Edu, to my West constituency, uh, let us not be obvious of the ancestral bilateral diplomatic relations between Ghana and the United Kingdom. Good morning, Moro. Please tell, tell your panelists, the auditor, that the word again not necessarily meant for police motive, but again can refer to Oliver as indisciplined, so he should just learn basic English language and context interpretations. Um, Zubair Alu says, my heart bleeds for Ghana, where everything, including our security, is politicized. We are doomed. And finally, this one's the IGP is not concerned that the UK sanctions based on what he tells the commissioner, these are the people we need in this country, same people who have not been going to keep 
seeing people who have not go who are not going to keep silent just because it's a white it's a white man, a person from so-called developed country or whatsoever whatsoever. Some people will value the IGP has done what has done today in two hundred years to time two hundred years time because they are living behind time in their thinking. Wow, I've got I've got like twenty more messages. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I mean, anyway, so let's do this. Um, um, so, Madame Gloria, you have something to say briefly before oh, yes. we go to Cathedral? I'll, I'll say that the game yes. definitely meant a, a, mm -hmm. a, a second arrest. Okay. His initial arrest was to do with the coup, yes. which we commented on that. Yes. And then I'm just looking at reading some of the questions that the IGP asks. Do you know the number of members of parliament, chief executives, and other high-profile Ghanaians who have been arrested and prosecuted for road traffic offenses and have submitted themselves to due process? If you care to know, we we'll would be delighted to share the list with you. Yes, that would be interesting. Then, are you interested in the number of lives lost to road accidents? Okay. And the number of injured persons, as well as families who have become destitute as a result of such accidents caused by the infractions of people. But I like didn't say no arrest anybody for road accidents or for, have, for road traffic I'm, I'm, offenses. I'm, I'm landing. Yeah, yeah, the I landed when you... I kept the right where you are speaking. So now let me continue. Okay. Okay. Now, these are... He didn't ask the question. He said statement. It's not a question mark. I'm, 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 I'm on the, the please. Am I on the floor? Can I go okay, ahead? She's, uh, she's on the floor and now. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the floor. floor. She's on the floor. She's on the floor. She's well, the floor. since he doesn't want me to ask any more questions, yes. let me just st stick to this. Okay. These are very interesting questions, and I will repeat: it will be important for this these questions to be shared as a form of public education. Okay. Because I've never thought of. Are you interested in the number of lives lost to road mm. accidents and the number of injured persons? as well as families who have become destitute as a result of such accidents caused by the infractions of people like the person of interest to you. Okay. I think this is kudos to the IGP. Right. We need these questions mm. to set us thinking okay. as form of public education. So, so I'm going to do Thank this. Um, it, now, we, I want us to rest this matter on the IGP's, um, whatever, the IGP's row, if you, if you want to call it, with the, with the British High Commissioner. Uh, uh,